Hey, you know, if you've been watching my channel for some time now, you know that my teaching is largely influenced by Mike Austin, a mentor of mine who is in the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest drive in a round of professional golf. He was also a legendary top 10, um, perennial top 10 teacher in all the golf publications. Now, not only did Mike have a really beautiful golf swing, but he boasted an incredibly high club head speed as well. Um, reportedly 150 miles an hour or more when he was in his prime. Now, one of the reasons that Mike was able to get the club so fast but be looking like he's so effortless was the unique way that he moved his hands through the shot. So right after this, let's delve a little bit deeper into what I think is one of Mike Austin's most closely guarded secrets, and I'm gonna reveal it for you. So don't go away. <music> Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a mission to hit the ball longer and straighter off the tee all the way to the green, leave no stone unturned, and that includes analyzing the movement at every skeletal joint in the body to make sure that it is promoting the most efficient motion possible. Hey, if you want to come along on this journey and maybe pick up some of the yardage you've been losing as you've been getting older, then by all means hit the subscribe button like this video at the end. If you liked it, leave a comment down below. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of unique ideas that Mike Austin was utilizing with his wrist joints or his hands through the impact area. Now, the first one I'd like to detail, um, you can see Hogan doing this and Hogan and some other golfers were quite famous for doing half of this. And that is when you're coming in to the slot, you've got the wrist, left wrist, in a bit of a bowed position like this. Now, Hogan used it and kind of held it with the irons. And of course, he came in famously with what he called a delayed pronation, which is actually not a delayed pronation. It's just more like a palm reflection of the left wrist. So he had his terminology wrong. But Mike was not doing that at all. Although he was in the, <laughs> the same position with his left hand, a slightly downward bowed hand here in the slot, uh, Mike was doing something altogether different with his hand. Now this action reminds me a lot of the day that I met Mike Austin. Under the shade tree on the bench by the first tee at Studio City Golf Course, the first thing that Mike showed you when you walked up to him was he took his left hand like this, and just by making the wrist free, he would do this action and he would bring that hand right up to your chest. Big, big tough looking guy, even in his old days. But he was not freezing this muscle here like this. But he was doing this with it. He was going from this bowed position and flapping through, kind of similar way you might throw a frisbee or backhand a, a uh, bull whip. So Mike would bring this motion right up to your chest, and you thought, thought he was gonna end you, stop your heart or something. And then what was even more scary was then he would go on to proceed to name all the bones in your body that he could break with that action. So he said your sinus, your clavicle, uh, your sternum, your... <laughs> your shoulder blades. He said he could break both arms of your forearm just by doing this motion. What he was trying to illustrate here was how free he was throwing the wrist through, not holding in this position. This was one of his big keys to hitting the ball so far. And yet he was awfully straight too. So don't think that he was sacrificing distance for accuracy. Anyone who played with him would tell you he was very straight. So let's look at that motion again here in the slot. I'll just have my left hand on it only so you can see very easily what I'm doing. As I start down, this is when you'd be doing it. You'd have a pretty flat left wrist. Let's say here I'm at a, the top of the swing. I'm gonna step down return the left butt cheek to the wall and start to turn and that'll get me into the slot here. And while I'm doing that, I'm simply just allowing the wrist to bow a little bit. It's really not that much of a muscular contraction. It's more, think of the wrist going flapping back and forth like this. 
you're just starting into this side of the flap so that through the ball you can go into this side of the flap. So let's get back to that, that bowed position again. Here we're in the slot and I've got this bowed position here. Now it's interesting, this makes the club face look kind of closed, but it's actually now square to the arc. And all I have to do is keep turning and flapping and the club face will go quite nicely square to the arc. Um, let me give it a try with just an easy swing. We'll come back and we'll look at it a bit in slow motion and see how I did. I'm gonna try to go do this Mike Austin secret hand action. All right, so you can see in slow motion there that my hand, as I came down, did start to kind of go into a little bit of a bowed position, maybe not quite as much as Mike or Ben Hogan. Remember, we're not getting here to hold on to it, or what Mike would call freeze the muscle, but instead to free up the muscle and throw the club head around the circle. That's what he believed a golf swing was, was throwing the head of the club around a circle. All right, the second really unique Mike Austin hand action, um, he never actually told me or anybody else that I know, he never actually explained this. I had to kind of pick it out for myself based on his principles and what he would call supple quickness and that it's all in the, all in the Hans. He would say it's all in the Hans in his Scottish accent, which was probably not real, but that's a story for a different time. I'm gonna use the pole here, and you may have seen me using this pole to do some other drills. Um, this is a great drill you can do to help pick up some hand speed, and therefore club head speed. I want you to watch here. This time, instead of at the elbow, I'm gonna line up kind of the butt of the club at the pole here. Maybe just my hand down to my wrist bone will be out ahead of it, closer to the camera. Now what we wouldn't want to do, what would slow us down, would be an independent arm pulling action. We want to reserve that for the torso turn. We want to allow the pulling force to be a result of this shifting turning action and not an independent action of the arms. For example, instead of if I were to reach out and shake your hand, if I would draw my arm back like this, and then now instead of shaking your hand, I'm going to slap your hand. If I just did this and brought my arm back to center, that would be a lot different than turning this way. My hand would slap you about two or three times harder, even though my arm is staying on the side of my body, if I were to just turn into it. So we want to make sure, I want you to understand that this is an isolated motion I'm showing you. This is independent of the body. So. We know that our enemy, which tends to slow the club down, is an independent pull. Because that way, if you're pulling with the arm independently, that means the handle of the club is getting pulled extra uh, linearly in the target direction, which is only going to, you can only have the club head move as fast as the handle is moving, and that's not going to be very fast. So instead of pulling this way, we'd like to actually do a little bit of what I'd call a counter move. Now I want to show you this, as I start to come into it, notice I'm just about to touch my arm to the pole and the club handle to the pole, and watch that action. Can you see where the handle actually ended up there? The handle backed up. So we're looking for a backup action. See that? I'll do it a little quicker and then we'll look at it in slow motion. Watch this. Okay. And especially I did, if we look at it in slow-mo, you could see that I was just about to hit my arm on the pole here 
and then the handle was about to hit the pole and then suddenly the handle backed up about eight inches as my hands through the club past the handle it's almost working like a counter move if i were to pull up and back as this club were to swing around so here's just a, a straight pendulum action now watch as i start to add counter action to the handle the club head starts to swing much higher in other words it's picking up acceleration because of the negative acceleration of the handle so the basic action i'm coming right into this pole and switch and switch and so that's kind of what we're incorporating as mike's second idea um, you would start with even incorporating this bowed wrist into it you can really get the club whipping it's a whipping action it's not a holding action or a freezing action but he believed it was a whipping action of the hands to get the club to go fast he believed you could also keep the club face very square to the arc that it was traveling on this way as well now of course once you add in the body you add in the body's motion of stepping over and turning through that's going to add enough positive pulling force to pull the club around this circular arc uh, going through the shot so you're never going to actually get the handle to back up in a shot however the motion i just saw you the negative or the counter move that we're doing with the hands like you would be pulling that hand back to whip a bull whip you see you'd throw it and then kind of pull it back um, or whipping a towel would be the same thing um, however this is not really going to happen in a golf swing because you've got this net positive torque of the handle being pulled on by the turning torso pulling the arm through but the net result you're going to have is a greater slowing down of the handle that would promote more torque in this direction to get the club head to freely pass the hands and pick up more acceleration through the hitting zone now let me see if I can hit a couple of these that feel like they have the backing up action and we'll take a look at them in slow-mo That was a good solid shot. So you could see there in the slow-mo that instead of the, the butt of the club actually backing up, that's never going to happen, but it does tend to, as it curves around the corner on an arc this way, it tends to slow down and turn back upwards this way, again propelling the club to go down and around. So we'd like to foster that not impede that or retard that by getting the hands to feel like they're backing up this way now for the sharper ones out there you'd say well steve why isn't that a cast well that isn't going to be a cast because we're providing enough pulling action on the handle to keep it moving in front of the ball while we're exercising the wrists in that manner so that we still are going to get forward lean on the club we're still going to get a down strike and a forward divot ahead of the ball and we're going to get the proper loft and distance um, out of the stroke whatever iron we're using all right i'm going to go back to working on these two little secrets they're feeling pretty good i'm hitting it out there pretty effortlessly now let's try one more here i'll try to do them both Hey, thanks again for watching and thanks for helping my channel grow. And hey, if I don't see you in the next video, I hope I see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take good care.